Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will talk about how to do performance tuning in SSIS and most of the things can be done in SQL queries as well. So I was getting a lot of requests from multiple people to make a video on the performance tuning and I already created one video on the performance tuning and I will share the link of the video in the description of this particular video and you will also be seeing a pop up on the top right side of the video. You can also watch that video as well and that can help you as well. So here are some points today and I will be discussing all these 5 points that I have actually implemented in my SSIS project on which I have worked in the past 12 years and they have personally helped me to run the SSIS packages faster. So the first point is that before loading the huge data to the SQL table, make sure that you remove the indexes from the destination table. Okay. So suppose you are loading a lot of records into the destination SQL table irrespective of the records are coming from the CSV file or they are coming from the another SQL server table. But if the destination is the SQL server table and if the data is huge that is going to be inserted then you need to make sure that you remove the indexes from the destination table because if there will be a lot of indexes on the destination table then the insert will run very slow and that can impact the overall performance of the SSIS package. So it's better that you remove the indexes from the table first then do the insert and recreate those indexes back. So let me show you the SSIS package. So what we were doing in this particular package that we were loading the data using the data flow task from one SQL server table to the another SQL server table. Okay. And suppose if the data was very huge to load then what we need to do first we need to remove the indexes from the destination table then load the data and then recreate the indexes back on the destination table. So this will surely improve the performance of the SSIS package. Now let me go back and discuss some other points as well. So the second point is that while running the update queries in the SSIS package make sure that you create the indexes on the joining fields. Yeah, so this is one of the important thing that uh, can be applied to the SQL queries as well. If you are running the SQL queries then you need to make sure that there should be indexes on the joining columns. So let me show you the SSIS package. Okay, so we got this particular SSIS package and uh, let me copy the data from here and paste the query here. So what we are doing here that we are going to update some fields like person's first name, last name, email address and some other columns as well. So we are updating the data from the staging email to the email table based on a join on the email id column. So if there are some queries in your SSIS package where you are joining two or multiple tables together and doing a join on some columns then you need to make sure that there are some indexes on the joining columns. Ideally what should happen that uh, let me go back to the SSIS package yeah so what should happen that we should create the indexes on, on this particular columns on the joining columns and only then we should run the update query. So what we can do that before the update query we can create the indexes the cluster index if possible we can create the cluster index on the email table and then create the cluster index on the staging email table on the email id column because the join is based on the email id column and suppose if clustered index is already created on some other column then you can create a normal index the non cluster index you can create on the email id column like whatever the column is on the joining fields so it will improve the performance of the overall query and which will result in the performance improvement of the SSIS package as well and maybe let me remove this particular thing and let me go back to the third point so the third point and this is one of the most important point of this particular video is that if you need to update a very large data in a SQL server table then try to change the update with creating a new table with required data. So this I have implemented a lot in my several projects that if I am going to update a very large table suppose I have a table which contains 200 million records or maybe 400 million records or 500 million records and if I need to update some columns in the table then if you are going with the update query then it will take a very long time maybe several hours to a day it depends on the data like how many records you are going to update then it's better that you create a new table instead of updating the existing table you can create a new table so creating a new table will be a lot faster as compared to updating the existing table so let me show you what I'm talking about here so in my SSIS package the third point let me open the SSIS package so suppose if I'm going to run some update queries here. So what I'm doing here, I'm just going to update this particular table. So let me copy the query from here and paste it here. So what we are doing here that we are going to update the address related fields in this particular table 
from another table based on a join on the email id so if the data to be updated is very huge then we should try to change the update query with the insert query so let me show you what we are, i'm talking about so the first thing is that you can make sure that there are some indexes on the column so even though we are creating the indexes but we should try to replace the update query with the insert query so let me copy the query into sql server management studio and let me close this particular object explorer so what we need to do that whatever columns we were going to update from the second table we can select those columns from the second table and then select rest of the columns from the main tables we are going to update the data into the main table so we will select the non updated column from the main table and the columns to be updated from the second table and we can create a new table like temp underscore email and we can do a left join so that it will select all data from our email table and it will select the matching data from the staging table so we can do a join between the email and email staging based on a left join and we will insert all the data into the temp email table okay and now what we can do we will check that if email underscore old table already exists then it will drop the email underscore old table and then what we will do we will rename the email table with the email underscore old name and then we will rename the temp underscore email table with the email table so after running this particular query what will happen that instead of updating the data to the email table a new email table will be created with all the required data in it and this particular query will run a lot of faster as compared to the update query so you can test it in your environment and let me know but the data should be very huge like maybe 200 million or maybe 100 million records okay for the smaller tables like if the data is small then you can just run the update queries but if the data is very huge then you should try with this particular option and believe me this will be very faster so this was the third point and now let me go back to the powerpoint so the fourth point is try to avoid functions in the where clauses of the sql queries so if you have some sql queries okay and if you are using some sql functions in it like some lower function substring function or maybe any function you are using in the sql queries then what happens even though there will be indexes on those particular columns the indexes won't be used by the sql server so that's why you should try to avoid the functions in the where clauses so let me show you what i'm talking about so in my fourth number SSIS package, let me open the SSIS package from here and I had this particular task before and uh, let me paste this particular query. Yeah, so what I was doing here that I was going to update the addresses columns into the email column based on a join on the staging email and based on a join on the email ID. So my first condition was that from the birth date column, the year should match to the year in another birth date column in another table. So I'm using two tables, email table and staging underscore email table. So the year should match, okay? So that's why I'm using the year function here. And my second condition is that the right four characters from the SSN should match as well, okay? So that's why I'm using the right function here. So even though I can create the indexes on the birth date column and I can create the indexes on the SSN column, but the indexes won't be used by the sql server because we are using some functions here like year function and write function okay so what we should try is that we should try to think of creating another column like while loading the data into the staging table what we can do we can use this particular function in the transformation like i can select the year from the birth date in the transformation and i should try to create a new column like i can create a new column as dob underscore y y y y and while loading the data i can create a extra column like dob y y in the source table and similarly while loading the data for the ssn columns into the staging table like while loading the ssn what i can do i can create one extra column here like ssn4 in that scenario because there will be two extra column then i can directly make a join on the ssn4 and DOB YYYY. So, and I can create the indexes on those two columns. Then the matching will be a lot faster because if you are running this particular query inside the SSIS package, so it means that SSIS package can be scheduled and the same package can be run multiple times. So, if you are going to run some update queries multiple times, then instead of using the functions, what you can do, you can actually create the sub columns here, like you can create a DOB YY column and SSN4 column and then you can just directly update the data after creating the indexes on those columns so let me show you what i'm talking about so let me copy the query from here and paste the query 
into this particular window that's what I'm saying that we can create these two columns like DOB YY and SSN4 in the tables and then using this way the update will run a lot of faster okay sometimes we have the flexibility like adding the extra columns in the table so you can talk to a manager and can say that if you will do this then it will improve the performance of the whole SSIS package then they might allow you to create the new columns and if they don't allow you to create the new columns in the main table then at least you can do this for the staging table as well that while loading the data for the staging table the new column should be created so the fifth one this point is very simple that while using the OLEDB destination use table or view fast load option so if a developer is beginner then he can make this kind of mistake that he, he won't use the table or view fast load and he will simply use the table or view even though when I was beginner then I have done this kind of mistake in my SSIS packages and sometimes I get some questions and email from some beginners as well and they do this mistake as well that they don't use the table or view fast load and even though if you are an expert and uh, an SSIS package is given to you which is using the data flow task then you should always try to see that are you using the table or your fast load or the normal insert so if you will be using the normal insert then the insert will run very slow so and if you will do the table or your fast load then it will do the bulk insert so let me show you the SSIS package so in my fifth SSIS package let me open the fifth package here so in the fifth SSIS package if you check the OLEDB destination here so under data access mode we have selected table or view option so this will do a normal insert which will be very slow so what you can do instead of table or view you will select table or view fast load so this will do the bulk insert which will be very faster okay so these were the five points those I discussed today and I'm sure that if you take care of these five points then the performance of the SSIS package should be improved a lot and you can test it in your environment and let me know so I think that's it for today's video and yeah I will share the whole SSIS project with you so that you can check all the five SSIS packages and I will also share the create table statement and data for the email table and the staging underscore email table as well thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video thank you so much